Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Ventures. So, you want that antenna that might get you that little extra in DX? Well, don't buy it. Let's make it. Okay, a few years ago I built a, uh, a half square antenna and I built it for 40 meters. And for 40 meters and 80 meters and 160, it actually uh, actually gives you a little more gain than it probably will on 20 because of the height. Because a dipole is so hard to get it actual, the height that you need to actually get it. And the uh, half square doesn't really need that height. I've done some research on it. I will leave down in the description a couple of websites for you guys to read up on it yourselves. It's uh, one of them's pretty intense. Uh, a lot of a lot of good, good, good information. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to be a 20 meter because 20 meters is, is is money for your sodas and potas. Uh, for me, 40 and 20 are probably your two best bands. 20 is a little more manageable for an antenna like this because it's not as wide. But what I'm going to show you today is some brackets that I made on my 3D printer to make it a little bit easier and to help. On the, on the coax, you're supposed to get your coax to come out at a 90 and then fall off. And I'm, I've, I've built into something into my bracket that kind of helps that. So let's get into the build. And uh, first of all, I'm going to show you a site where you can get some good information. And then I'll show you how we're going to build it. Okay, let's just take a look at this. This is hamuniverse.com. Pretty good uh, write-up on a half-square antenna. It, it goes into double half-square and bobtail curtain. But what we're going to be interested in today is this half-square. So if you look at the chart here, on the top is your your uh, horizontal part. And to get the, the length of that, you're going to take 502 and divide that by the frequency. And the frequency I'm going to use today is... 14225. Um, I may want to do a little bit of uh, digital work, so I wanted to go a little bit lower than I usually go. And for my top measurement, I came up with 35 feet 3 and 1 half inches. And that's going to stay pretty much the same. From what I've seen other people do uh, adjustments on, uh, they do most of their adjustments on the vertical part. So if you look over here on the left, uh, here's the vertical. On that, you divide 249 by the frequency. And I came up with uh, 17 and a half feet. I cut my wires about 18 feet. And my first fold over was 12 inches. So I actually was a little bit shorter than normal than, than what it came out to be. But I know the wire that I have uh, for velocity factor is usually a little long anyhow. But always like you always want to cut just a little bit long to make sure. So the, And then if you look, here's your... Uh, it's this is a piece of coax here that they're showing this corner this right hand corner up here and if you noticed the center of the coax goes to the horizontal and vertical piece this is one piece of wire from here to here and then the shield side goes to this vertical side right here and this is the way I'll have it laid out in the field I did I will take it out and we will tune it in the field um, and see what we can come up with now there's various ways you can put this antenna up. One of the ways you can put it up is in trees. And if you have trees, then you're, what you have to carry or take out to the, the field or wherever you're going to do your portable operations. I'm building this for portable. Uh, you have less stuff to carry. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on two 10-meter poles because I happen to have two that are the same, basically the same. They're different brands, but they're almost exactly alike. And I, what I'll do is I'll lay them down on the ground. I'll measure them out. I'll leave myself a couple feet on the bottom for these verticals to be off the ground. And I'll, I'll probably end up having to shorten them anyhow. This is a pretty easy antenna to build. I mean, the hardest parts is these corner parts. And what's going to be different in my build, I, I, I on my 3D printer, I made a corner piece here on the right and a corner piece here on the left that should make it a little bit easier for setup. I'll put this in the comment section, this uh, website here. And I'll also put another one from Rudy Sevens that goes into a lot a lot of detail and there's different ways of building these antennas some of them are for more gain some of them are for less gain but this is what we're going to build here and the thing on my bracket that i built it's going to have i'll show it to you guys in a little minute here it's going to have a piece of fiberglass uh 
it's basically it's a uh, electric fence stake that I've cut. It's only, it's only it's actually not very long. It's just a piece I already had cut, and I may make it longer later. But what it's going to do is it's going to bring this coax needs to come off at a 90 as, as far as you can get it at least. And I will say that probably a couple feet is, is enough. And then you can bring it down at, at like a 45. And what I'm going to do is that that piece of fiberglass that's attached to my bracket is going to attach to my, my, uh, my mast to hold this away. Okay. Up here in the corner, I'm also going to have a piece of paracord on this corner and the left hand corner to hold it to the top it'll be above and, and see how this is coming down kind of similar to that to support it and both of these lines these verticals uh sections of the antenna will be away from the um about a foot or so away from the uh the mast and the advantage to this antenna is a low takeoff angle like a vertical but it also has some gain okay let's get on to i'll show you the parts that i built on my 3d printer and how I'm going to put that all together. All right, so here's what we're going to have for, for this uh, half square build. This was the original bracket that I designed up, and I'm just not happy with the, the strength of this part. So until I can get that figured out, that's that's not going to happen. This will be the uh, side where it goes across to. So it'll go across and then down. And this side was, is where it's going to, where your power is going to come in for your coax here. And then it's going to set like this, and that's on the back side. It's going to go down to the vertical, and then it's going to go from the uh, center part of the coax. It's going to go across and down to this this side over here. So it's going to sit. So longwise, it's going to sit like that for with a wire going down on both sides and one across the top. You guys saw it in the picture, you know, when I showed you the other parts. Um, the only thing, you're, the tools you're going to need, pair of cutters. These are crimpers. These are um, for these. These are, uh, I'm going to use these instead of these because these are kind of big. I didn't like the way they fit. All right. And, and then these were the crimpers for that. So what happens here is, this uh, piece of fiberglass that's on here, and this is just a it's elect electric fence stake, and this is gonna your coax is gonna go on here, and then you're gonna attach this to here, because and, it's, and this would be the back side. What happens is your your coax needs to go off at a 90 degree to the vertical, so your vertical is going down here and it needs to go 90 degrees off. All right. Now the other stuff I have, I got your two, I got the two wires. Here's the long wire. Here's the short vertical. This is the vertical and the uh, horizontal piece here. Although everything's going to be wound up together, I'm not going to end up taking things apart. Everything's dedicated to it. So this is your, now this is the long wire and it's going to set like this. It's going to go into the back, to the red side of this, which is the sitter of the coax. And that goes up and over, okay? And you have to feed this through before you put the connectors on. So we're just going to go I may speed this up, up, down, and these, all these little holes, all these are for is for a strain relief. You could put a knot, but it doesn't really need it. Okay. So that one's going to go like that one. This one is a straight, this one is a straight vertical. So it's, it's going to go the other way. So it's going to go down this way, up this way, and then back down. Now, where the next vertical that comes into this one is, and it'll be, set, it'll be setting the wire will come across and then come down. I've got a knot that's tied right here. So I may have to take the knot out later to, to put everything through, but the knot will sit there and then it'll go down. And so they'll have my two verticals will be the same. So for now, we're just going to hook this up. So we've got these where they go. So let's just turn it around so it's easy to work with here. We'll get our wires out of the way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to strip these two. And you strip, I'm going to strip them back a ways. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to solder this right away. Because I'll, I'll do it later. Because I'm pretty sure I can get solder in these, uh, these 
these connectors. So I, I want them extra long for now. So all this does is, is it just slips over the end here. Like that. And it should just about, oh there we go. Now it's out the end there. You take this tool and you put it over it. Push it up to the plastic part. Make sure the wire's in there and crimp it. All right. There's a little sticking out, so what I'll do is I'll clip the extra off. Okay, and we'll do the same with this one. Now, you need to check your your BNC connectors. Uh, the Smoking Ape just did a nice video on that, on, uh, on how those work, these BNC binding post connectors. And, I, and if I get it wrong, guys, you know, sorry, it's, but you can see what it is. All right, this tool set, here's the tool set. And I'll put this in the uh, description below also. So this is going to go in here. And the reason I haven't connected this yet, this part that tighten this up is because it makes it easier to screw these in. There we go. Just got to get it lined up. I'll screw that down on there so it's nice and tight. So we'll do the same thing again. We got it down in there. Tighten it nice and tight. And that's what these things, these are ferrules, I think is what they call these. And they're, that's what they're made for is to go in places like this where you tighten a screw up to them or something. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull our wire, excess wire, And if you do think you need a little more strain relief, you can put a knot in one of the spots here. I've never had to with this setup though. It pull, you can pull on that pretty good and it's not doing anything. You got your wire coming this way and then you got your vertical wire going down. And on the other side, like I told you, where did it go? It'll do this, basically the same thing on this side. So now what we gotta do is take this out in the field and test and, uh, and set the SWR on it. All right, so there we go. Pretty easy build, guys. Okay, I just taken a different uh, direction here to see if it helps. There's the uh, hole going up. Somebody overcompensating for noise there. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute here. So there's the thing. Is I've got it taped to the pole, the, the uh, fiberglass pole to the extendable pole, and then tied off to hold it good. And then it goes. Down like that over to there working good I'll take it home and I will do up the bottoms here here's the bottoms but I'll do those up nicer and I think I'm good right where it is for now and uh, yeah I think it's gonna work really well all right I'm using 10 meter poles uh, and the reason I'm doing that is that way I don't have to use the tips of like a, if I did a seven meter pole, I'd be be using the very tops of those poles and they'd be pretty weak. But this these poles are about two thirds of the way up and they're fairly strong right here. And if I put a, uh, I could probably pull things tighter if I wanted to by putting a guy line at the very top on each and pulling it um, away from each other. So there we go. I originally did a foot and that was what I um, actually extra that I had. And then I went an extra six inches and then I cut off six inches off of the fold. And now I'm at uh, like perfect SWR 14.016. So that's the second adjustment. Okay, I folded it six more inches, but I cut six more inches off. So I've cut 12 inches off and I folded it 12 inches from the original figure. And I had that at home, I'll tell you. And I'm at. Uh, 14,250, 1.07, 1.08, 1.08, something like that. So I, I think we're there. And I need to get out and plow the lane again. Uh, I have a neighbors that lived out the end of the lane and they're Montana. older. And so I, uh, I try to uh, okay, Jerry. Wisconsin station. Yeah, I used to be able to talk to Japan uh, constantly. Uh, 
uh, every day very easily up until the sunspot cycle is pretty loud. Changing. Okay, so not too bad of a build. Uh, I figure that pretty much anybody can build this antenna and do a very good job at it. It's uh, now when I talked about let's don't buy it, uh, you will have to have at least two decent sized poles. In 20 meter, you can get by with smaller poles, but they're not going to be as strong. That's why I went with the 10 meter poles. The 10 meter poles give you a little more strength at the top because I don't have to use the top sections. But if you have places where you can get uh, a line up into a tree, or two trees actually, guess what? Now you don't have to carry as much stuff, and now the cost has gone down. All you need is some throw line. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. And if you are new here, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, hit all. That way you get all my future videos. This is Chuck from KK6USY Ham Radio Avengers 73 All. Be safe and hope to catch you on the airways. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Chuck here, KK6USY for Ham Radio Avengers. So you want that antenna? <laughs> Sorry, there's somebody walking over there.